Hello and uh, uh, welcome everyone to the latest webinar from Oasis Software, the Software House of Arrow. Uh, for the next 45 minutes, we will take a look at our mass motion software, the most advanced pedestrian simulation and crowd analysis tool available anywhere. So mass motion is capable of simulating hundreds of thousands of people within a matter of hours and hence reducing simulation time by several days. Thank you, Nick. Mass motion. Thank you very much, Nick, for the introduction. Um, mass motion. Nick says the world's most advanced pedestrian and crowd simulation software developed originally in-house in in Arab. Um, basically, because um, the Arab transport planners were trying to use well uh, the the pedestrian programs which were available on the market um, at the time and. None of, none of these were actually sort of um, giving giving engineers what they actually wanted. I mean, um, a lot of them were two dimensional only, so you have to have each floor on a separate plan, which you stick side by side and and artificially link them together. There were options, you know, things like that, that they weren't fully sort of continuous, so everything's based on sort of grid basis and so on. Some of them were involving an artificial amount of interaction for the users to tell them okay i'm, I'm going to assume that 80 percent go up the escalator and 20 percent up the stair and that sort of thing um mass motion is quite different to that it's an autonomous agent system which means each pedestrian in the model is is modeled um in in analysis is modeled as an individual person as an individual agent and these agents have their own profile their own personality their own intelligence and goals and so on and they are individually working out how they will get through the model if the escalator is available they'll go up that if if there's a huge crowd or queue at the escalator they might choose to go up the stairs if the stairs are not very long um and and so on um, and end result is you get a very powerful tool for both analyzing and testing the building designs, fire escape requirements, and so on, and also very, very good for communicating the, the, those results to to the clients um, afterwards in, in ways that, that, that they can really uh, understand. It's different. It's based on a full three-dimensional space. It's a three-dimensional model. Um, it might be two-dimensional in su such as this model here, but you can see the the barriers blocking these agents are still three-dimensional objects. Um, but it gives three true wayfinding through full three-dimensional space upstairs and escalators and ramps and so on. It also has discrete event process modeling built in which means is you can you can get the agents to do particular tasks so railway station they some might have to go and buy a, a train a ticket airports process modeling is crucial to airports you've got to do all the check-in processing security processing and so on um and it's scalable i mean We've tested mass motion models up to one million agents, um, but that's not the limit. We're pretty sure you, you can go further, but um, we've gone to one million so far because that seemed a sensibly large number. Though, inch enough, some customers are beginning to look at larger models than this. Uh, the limit is only really your hardware on, on, on these models. So. Model is applies. Um, problem and goal definition. Um, each agent has their own goal, though that the, they are trying to get to a particular location. If it's an escape model, they're trying to get out. If it's a train or an airport, they're trying to get to a particular plane or train, and so on. Um, and they can also have the, the tasks to do along that route. And, End result of, of the simulation, you then get data out of their journey times, congestion times, congestion quantities, and so on. Um, because everything's driven from the model, it, it's very easy to um, test different scenarios um, 
if you want to block off an, a, a, a doorway, you can either deactivate the doorway or stick a barrier across it, uh, and so on. Um, it's also good for um, you can test sensitivity. There's um, random seeds in there to, to um, um, give the variation, but you can also do a batch test with a variety of random seeds, so, so, so you can check um, for um, get overall results, averages, Monte Carlo type approach, and so on. The modeling itself is is well, you can create the models directly in mass motion. Most people create the models externally in a, in a CAD 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 format. Um, most common ones that I see are um, from Revit, um, ArchiCAD, SketchUp. Um, they can you can also do use AutoCAD, MicroStation, Rhino. In fact, any CAD program which can export IFC, OBJ, FBX, and so on. There's quite a variety of different input options you can take. Once the model comes into mass motion, it's then the geometry is then categorized into different types. So floors, where the agents walk, um, links, which can be doors, ramps, stairs, escalators, and so on between the floors, barriers, which sit on the floors and generally get in the way, and portals, which are starts and endpoints, origins and destinations of the agents, but also can act as waypoints uh, and so on as the agents pass through the model. Because everything is driven from, from the geometry, when you change the geometry um, the, the, and rerun the analysis, the analysis is, is updated based on that. So you want to change the door width, you change the door width in the model, the physical model. You can override these if you want, um, but generally you sort of, everything's driven from the geometry itself. In case you've made um, some mistakes and so on, there is also a, a quite a, um, a check system where when you export from the model to the simulator to, to try and um, catch the um, majority of problems before the analysis starts. Scheduling. Um, so like an escape model, it's scheduling is reasonably simple. You just put a number of people on each floor and so on. Um, but when you get onto transportation, uh, you can actually build in timetables for trains and planes and so on and have people have the agents coming into the model based on that you can base can create these schedules within the model which which I'll show you in a minute for those sort of complexities quite often most people um, define the schedules externally in the spreadsheets and then import the values and that there are um, there are links links to and from Excel for, for, for these for this scheduling the agents themselves, um, there you, you can have one or more more profiles. These profiles, well, the, pro, the profile supplied with mass motion is based on through in movement characteristics, but you, you can create your own profiles um, for for movement impaired persons and so on. Um, for additional tracking, you can you you can you can color the agents separately into, into different groups and track by track by the colors you can give agents tokens and take tokens away from them and so on <coughs> and so, on. so there's lots of tracking options you can do not just overall times but also times across floors times holding tokens and so on export the model to the simulator this in the simulation side where the actual number crunching is done, the 3D geometry is passed into a, a schematic model. So in the in the contemplative mode, when the agent's thinking about how they're going to get to the next waypoint or destination, they have this sort of sparse model uh, in mind, and they have knowledge of how long they it will take them to get across those floors, follow the queues, and so on. These 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 time predictions are then modified by their personality. So an agent who doesn't like queuing will be more likely to, to go go the longer route around to, 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 to avoid the, those sort of behaviours. Um, then you, so within the model itself, when the um, this, in the 
reflex modes that they will they will respond to um, conditions they find and and also do things like of course take take shortest routes across floors and all that sort of thing so, so they're both looking at shortest time and shortest distance the results out of this this analysis then get journey times you know cross floors to the destinations and so on flow rates through doors down staircases put cordon lines across across locations count cubes and so on you can measure queue lengths uh, over time you can put um, density maps so level of service maps utilization maps and so on you can take um, 3d recording so um, all the images in 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 this PowerPoint come directly from mass motion these, these are all screenshots or videos created from mass motion you can also um, use the model itself with the results and, and just run forwards and back through, th through through the analysis and actually zoom in on problem areas and, and look at these with your clients and so on in the meeting without having to rewrap run run the analysis other analysis options um, go on go to the next slide Good nice other other analysis options egress maps um, shows where agents are on a floor for a, a particular time frame See by the color contours the vision maps because the agents are looking where they're going to avoid bumping into other agents and and barriers and so on using social forces model uh, you can plot the aggregation of, of where the agents are looking so you, you can you can work out good locations for signage for advertising and so on calibration and validation is obviously very important for pedestrian models um, there's a lot of testing a lot of work done to make sure that mass motion produces accurate results um, one example um, Canary Wharf Tower in, in London um, before before d d d doing a fire escape test um, we ran a mass motion model models from others programs hand calculations and so on then set, set the fire alarms off and timed how long everybody got out, out of the building it's about 20,000 people um, mass motion gave the most accurate yet still conservative um, results f f from that egress likewise on stations and so on um, uh, mass motion models have been calibrated to match existing um, models it's been calibrated against research um, f f from uh, around the world and, and so on it's been applied quite a range of places and this is a this is, this is some examples transport planning terminal design this is where mass motion started from originally so um, quite a few train and train stations plane um, plane train stations airports uh, so on um, fire evacuation around the world and also venue planning from theatres and stadia uh, including including some work on the last London Olympics so enough overview let's have a look at the software itself now first of all um, I've just got a hotel model I, I use this hotel model because it, it, it's quite a good m microcosm of the sort of things that you um, can experience in a mass motion model and this is the case as you can see I've got um, four floors of bedrooms ground floor reception some meeting rooms and a rest <coughs> a restaurant at the back and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new schedule and what this schedule will let's just clear that curve and I'm going to say yeah 100 agents in five minutes that's fine and these agents are going to enter in the external portal so you can see that's the 
outside down there and they are going to go to um, well, they're going to be given one of these bedrooms to go to and let's run that and export that data just creating the nice data and let's launch the simulator itself so here we have the the simulator view um, and um, let's leave it off I'll leave the 3d graphics on now the 3d graphics um, usually sort of the slowest point now so he's going so these agents are coming into the model and going usually up the up the escalator the escalator the elevator and into the various rooms now um the three graphics can be slow points so if you've got a large analysis um you can quite often switch the graphics off and it will run a lot quicker now i told it to run for, for a maximum of five minutes so still got a few outside but the uh what we then get is um on this case let's look at the some of the textual results and these are some of the oh that's not the one i wanted journey times that's the one I wanted so I was looking at flow counts then um, these are the Asians who, who completed their journeys where they started from where they ended how far they went how much congestion there was how long it took them to get there including starts and end times um, there are the flow counts through doors which are usually quite low but somewhere out there will be the some of the lift uh, doors um, queue links and so on so let's let, let's make this model a touch more complex let's let's tell tell the agents um, rather than just going straight to the room I'm going to edit that and I happen to have some action set up now I've got an action set up called check in and what this check in will do is it tells them tells the agents to go to a process called called the reception queue now the reception queue is just this one here so this is um, this is the reception queue now that there's a process here that was so the so the agents will go to the process queue and the process queue will then send them to one of the two reception desks whichever one is available at the time and the reception desk will then give them a room key and, the, and at that point they'll then be released to go off to their room so let's rerun that. Let's just re-export it. Reload and go. Let me just pause a minute. Let's look at it in more detail. Now each of these agents coming in they've um, so they've been told to go to um, reception and following the reception they'll they'll then go to their, their bedroom I mean so these are seeking the reception queue he's in the reception queue and this one has has now left the reception queue and is now on his way to the bedroom and he's been given a token called a room key 
whereas these others haven't got the room key yet which means um, not only can you plot how long it takes for them to get totally th th through, through the model but also um, how long it takes them to get from the reception desk to to the individual bedrooms themselves now there's far too many people to go up those lifts <laughs> I think we need more reception desks and in fact journey times by token um, so you can then see just oval drone you can see that um, the variety of, of the durations for, for, for the agents to actually get to the rooms okay let's let's make this a bit more complex still um, let's disable that rule and I've got a couple of rules already set up now the incoming rule I've got here is got a more complex action so rather than just checking in um, let me view the graph of this um, you can see that 80% of these agents coming into the model will be told to go and check in as we saw just now go get a reception queue then off to the bedroom 20% on the other hand will be told no you're not checking in you're going to the restaurant to eat so th these will go, go to the restaurants they'll be changed um, to, to, to um, a, a green avatar they'll go to the restaurant for a time admittedly quite a short time but um, and they'll then go back to their origin and exit the simulation um, the other agents the outgoing these use the outgoing action and what this outgoing if I view the graph of that uh, if I tuck that over to that side and call the other one up um, see the outgoing actions 20% are told to check out now they're given the room key at this stage they gain the reception queue and the reception queue will detect they have a room key and take the room key off them and then they'll, they'll go outside and exit the simulation and so so you can check um, times for times from reception desk to rooms and from room to reception desk likewise um, restaurants in this case 80% of the guests already in the hotel are told to go go to restaurants wait and then they see their origin which is their, their their room rather than the outside so let's export this version and reload this to and what I'll do as well is um, right, let me um, run this and we can see that um, another red agents coming in um, blue agents going out and green agents whether from inside or outside are going into into the restaurant if I just pause that a minute so we can see these agents here so um, he's waiting and he's an internal guest there might be some others in here who've come from, okay this one here he's come from outside and once he's finished his time in the restaurant he will then um, exit exit the simulation <coughs> There it goes. It's a fast food restaurant, obviously. So that's sort of a microcosm of some of the detail results. Uh, the, um, the processing, but you can also do egress analysis. So let's oh, let me um, de disable those rules and activate these. Now these are um, fire profile. So I'm going to create a number of agents in um, the bedrooms 
I'm going to create a number of agents in the meeting rooms, which you can see the meeting rooms are down here, and creating again a number of agents in the restaurant, which is over here. Um, what these agents are going to do is initially notice none of these have actually been given an exit portal they'll just stand there until uh, until they're told to go so what will happen if i look at their population there's an action on each of these called fire alarm and fire alarm fire alarm will do is it will test where the agents are in the model i've got some i've got i've got a public area and, and room areas zones set up so the public areas the meeting rooms the reception the restaurants um assumption here is that there are staff on hand and so their their pre-movement time is quite short in the rooms on the hands the pre-movement time is long if you're a fire engineer you'll recognize that the pre-movement time for rooms is very short um but this is an example rather than an accurate model. Um, it's an easy example, really. And you'll see that when we run the analysis, those who are in the rooms will start moving later than the ones in the in the public areas. And there's only one um, escape point, which is the front door on this model. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the agents not to use the um, the elevators so I'm just going to disable those elevators which are inside the shaft here to make sure that they do use the stairs. So if I export all that, quick check, make sure yeah, I've got my salt files clear, and reload the data and okay I'm just pause at the moment so we can see that we've got a large number of these blue and aqua colored agents in the um, in the meeting rooms and quite a few agents in the restaurant and a scattering of agents throughout the various bedrooms Maybe one, maybe two, hmm, maybe four over in that bedroom over there. Looks like there's some party going on. Um, right. Let's set this running. So we can see that. Uh, let me just, so they're starting to move. And the agents in the bedroom above are starting to move as well. Now, while they're doing that, let me just pause it and have a look at what some of the agents are thinking. Now, we can see. Um, this agent is on his way, is um, he's seeking the external, he's finished waiting. Um, and we can look at some of the various things he's looking at, the, the door, the walls and so on. We can look at his, his vision circle and those agents who, who are inside, he, he, um, he's, he's taking account of. So they will avoid each other, they, they, they predict where the agents are going to going and therefore try to avoid them um, and his movement vectors and so on. Um, you can also, if I call it the level of service and you can see um, just how how crowded things get, obviously there's a bit of a queue to get out, out of, of this door here. So let's just finish off that analysis. Trying to get out the door. I don't think the door's quite wide enough really for proper escape, but and wait for the nice run. Okay. That's our run. So you can then get things like journey times and obviously escape times is the crucial thing for an escape model. Um let me just freeze that pane and 
let's see the last one out four minutes 23 seconds um to remove themselves from from the building right. so that's sort of numerical results let's look at look at um other sort of post-processing options so uh we can can replay um, the results. Let me just wind it on a bit. Um, so it's quite easy to go back and recheck or wind back the, uh, the, the, the times. We can also get various analysis options. So let's add in, let's say, a level of service map and I'll just move that into position and yeah oh, that that will do and let's look at the properties so the properties um, I'll say okay that's, that's a sort of queuing situation I'll ask for the queuing coloration and um, either the maximum or the experienced average. Let's go experienced average Q and let's just pick that view a minute. And they will start moving. And then oh, let's let's wind on a bit. Go on. And let me just hide the agents a minute. Ooh. Nope, not that one. Hide that one. Um, so you can see um, how the the level of service and so on builds up over time. Um, and we've reached sort of a plateau, really, I think, on that uh, on that level of service. Um, other options, I mean, there there are things like the um, utilization maps, which shows where agents walk. There is the cordon line, which measures you know a line which you know, can cross count cube agents in a, in an area. Evacuation map um, um, shows where the agents are and particular time frames, and vision maps shows where they are looking as as they go on and let's just uh, I'll wind that on to the end so we've got the end result so we can see we, things are getting reasonably but not excessively congested in terms of um, queuing at that point so that's um, that's a very quick sort of overview um, let's have a look at some in place in detail where mass motion has been used um, Union Station this is in this is in Toronto it's particular station um, passenger numbers in the next 10 years are looking to, uh, likely to double up to a predicted peak of 35,000 passengers in the peak 15 minutes so quite a few people to get through the station um, mass motion was used um, to check the refurbishment design but also the construction sequencing and so on so um, the existing station was surveyed and a mass motion model built of of that um, surveys were done to, to see exactly how people entered the building and so on and the mass motion model was calibrated to match the existing passenger flows then the various changes were made to the model Closing passengers off, pass, passes, passages off, adding new platforms on, and so on, and to rerun the model so, so you, we can check that the station will still function adequately during the the construction phase. Then in the final model, then the numbers were ramped up to the um, predicted um, flows to ensure that the final design would also function as 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 desired. 
end result um station will work but there was first change had to be made what were with it if SLS had to be moved retail were in bad or good positions and, and additional um, different locations for these sort of things and everything so it was used but but to inform design uh, and to prove the design as well the model itself um, you can see the exploded model on the left the platforms and the station itself are modeled in great detail the surrounding streets were also modeled but in much more schematic schematic form um, these were there, there to, built in there to to, act, to to enable the agent to actually work out which entrance they would be likely to go to from where they start in in this surrounding about two kilometers or out I think um, a model of this complexity would be quite difficult to create in most other programs um, because you to, to work out route options and so on would be very tricky where the agents just do it by themselves Another transport. Uh, this is Transbay Terminal in San Francisco, a a um, an interchange for rail, bus, and uh, and and for pedestrians. You can see results there, all in the full three D space. Airports. Um, it's JetBlue Air Airport, JetBlue Terminal, JFK Airport, in New York. The airport was modelled full curbside to airside. This particular video is, sh is showing you just the retail uh, so it's a section. And, um, you see the um, is not as crowded as, uh, as as they feared it might be. Another airport this is Montreal Airport, and you can see the agents, the various tasks the agents are given. I mean, from um, the remote. Um, check-in stations then some of them are then going into the the baggage drop area so down the snake queues and then to the next available ch check-in desks once they finish the check-in desks they then go off to the security checks and so on so, so you can model the, the entire entire airport processes um, all, all the way through So venue, this is um, is it is it is a theatre over in over in Vienna. Mass motion was used to ensure that the guests coming in or the patients coming in and leaving the, the theatre could do so in in comfort and and reasonable time and so on. Um, mass motion has also been used up onto full um, football stadia and so on. So summary. Uh, Mass motion, great for testing your designs, um, proving they work, but then also communicating the, those results to your client um, afterwards with full graphical um, and numerical results out of the software, and, and it communicates well with, with, with the whole whole design team so with with the bim models um cad cad drawings and so on so um that stage i think um time to look at any questions <laughs>